said, <laughs> of all people, could you find somebody else? Uh, no, you have to be the first. <laughs> you have to be the first. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. All right. We're good. Okay, Miss Ma'am, you know how this goes. No, you don't. Um, so basically what I wanted to do is because I've been on YouTube and whenever I do a search for photography, I find some really great photographers, but they're usually men. They're usually all men. And you and I both know a lot of fantastic female photographers out there and especially black female photographers. So I just wanted to do a series that kind of highlights and puts your faces and your names and your work out into the YouTube universe so that when people do a search for photography, they can come across your wonderful work too. I wanted to start with you because you have a long history with <laughs> photography from the military to the police and now even in retirement doing fine art. Tell me how you got started. <laughs> okay, well, first of all, it wasn't the police, it was the FBI. Oh, so Ooh, I am so sorry. <laughs> Even more outstanding though, <laughs> right? <laughs> Even more outstanding, right? <laughs> say to give you a break it up. I was saying, even more outstanding, right? So how did you I get- I think so. Yeah, so what, I mean, I'm not gonna say obviously. When, when, first of all, which branch of the service were you in? Um, Air National Guard, which is under the Air Force. Okay. And how yes. did you come to be a photo photographer in the in the service like that? Well, what happened was um, I knew that once I graduated from high school, I uh, my mother wouldn't be able to you know send me to school. She was a single mom, so you we already knew that you didn't even ask. You just knew, mm -hmm. and I knew I had to find a job, and uh, so I took the ASVAB test, and that's the military test and everything. So I did that. Didn't do well for the Air Force, but I went up to the Air National Guard. So I was sitting there talking to the recruiter and uh, they had a list of um, jobs you can apply for. So mm -hmm. I'm going down through the list and everything and all this and that, nothing was boring. Oh my God, that's all photography. And I said, oh, okay, that's cool. Let me try that. So <laughs> with tech school and everything, came out as a photographer, still had to look for a job. And um, Back then, I don't know if they still do it now, the FBI was advertising the local newspaper back home in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I applied for it, got into the mail room. It takes about six, eight months for them to do the background check and all that kind of stuff. So it took about eight months, got into the FBI, got in the mail room, and maybe about a year later, a photography position opened up. I got in because my background was the military. Mm -hmm. You know, military, they, you know, they train you well. So they knew I was trained well and all that. And next 39 years, I was doing photography, forensic photography, surveillance, um, uh, you know, site surveys, tactical site surveys, along with the uh, Air National Guard, I was doing photography there too. Mm -hmm. So they both worked hand in hand. Okay. One helped the other. Without the guard, I probably would never gotten into the photography with the FBI. So you weren't taking pictures before and then oh, decided no, I to... need a job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know how you hear people, oh, well, you know, my uncle had a camera and I walked around with them or grandma has, I need a job. <laughs> <laughs> I need a job. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Let me do that. And it paid off. It did well. I, 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 like I always tell people, I had the best job ever because I enjoyed what I did. Mm -hmm. And if you enjoy your job, you would say, I had the best job ever because you enjoy what you did. It has nothing to do with the people that you're with. Mm -hmm. It's just a job. If you enjoy it, you had your best job ever. So okay, that so was fun. So forensic photography, obviously, that's clearly a different skill set than the work you're doing now and the work, not just the work you're doing now in your personal life, because even when you were still working, you were doing some fine art photography. You were very much, right. you go places, you would take pictures of scenes and like patterns and things like that. But that's a different skill set because I remember seeing you, I feel like I saw you with a picture with a whole lighting rig for forensic photography at one point, or you pointed out one of the lighting rigs you had to use from time to time. Oh, Maybe that wasn't okay. a picture. And it, is, and, and it is different because you knew what you had to do. Mm -hmm. You know you had to do this and this. If you had a piece of evidence, you know you had to photograph it, find out what film worked, 
because back then we started out with film. Mm -hmm. uh, what filters worked if you needed filters? You tried this and that and the other. And now I'm I'm trying to get outside that box. You know, I'm not in that box anymore. I'm, I got that freedom to do what I want the way I want. And I've been training myself to do that, just to go out and have fun. Okay. So, yeah. And, you know, even though um, it's funny because I didn't have no degree in photography, my supervisor, which was awesome, he had no degree in photography. They all was OJT. They all trained each other, but they were so good. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like unbelievable, you know, the stuff that I learned. It just, you know, and people always think, oh, forensic, is, you know, CSI, the body, the body parts and all that. We did some body parts. But a lot of uh, forensic, it could be matching edges. It could mm -hmm. be obliterated writing, shoe impression, tire impression, or anything. Anything you can think of. Your wall, your glasses, you know, your cheek. You know, they sent body parts because they had things on it. We enhance it mm -hmm. and try to compare it with something else that they had. So it was a little bit of everything. You had your crime scenes, you know. We did the crime scenes. We did searches and things like that. So a little bit more than what you see on TV because it didn't take 30 minutes to get the job done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, in an hour it was solved. I'm like, man, I wish it all was solved like that. But it was, it's it's really law enforcement photography is totally different from what the other side of the world does. Yeah. You know, it's just like graphics. Um, there's graphic designers do this and this and this, and then there's the law enforcement. And the, the people I used to work with, I used to walk around to see what they were doing, how they used to put everything back together, how they had to add the audio to this and build this and build that. And you're like, man, so it's so much more out there people don't know, and they don't know it's out there. Mm -hmm. They really don't know it's out there. So... It, it, it's, it, it was, it was interesting. Yeah. It was really, it, it, it was, you like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> the country girl from West Virginia out here just like, wow, you know, it's, but it was fun. It was fun. So it was a lot of OJT in the studio and I had a pad about this thick and I had it in my lab coat. I had notes at the notes at the notes at the notes. But we also, the FBI had their own in-house trainee at the academy. Mm -hmm. you know, different photography levels and all that kind of stuff. So we had a lot of that also. Okay. So, so I know yeah. you said, okay, so I'm going to challenge you back. I'm going to, I'm going to push back on it for one reason. You said that it's different and I believe it, but when, what you just described, having to match edges and shoe impressions and things like that, that attention to fine detail, I see some of that in your current personal work in terms of being because able to I was capture taught, scenes. I was taught to be thorough. Mm-hmm. You didn't get it done until he said it was okay. You know, you could have worked on, okay, I had a um, shoe impression on a mouse, you mm -hmm. know, the mouse. Yeah. And I photographed it this wait, way, that way, wait, this wait. way, that way. A mouse, like a physical rat mouse rodent? Or no, 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 oh! like, 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 <laughs> I'm like, ooh, that's a talent right there. That's a skill. <laughs> well, I, I will give you an example. Um, this lady got murdered, mm. young girl. And before she died, she scribbled something on her hand. Oh, wow. So what they did before, I think, I think before they buried her, they took the hand and sent it to us. And we photographed it any way we could to try to bring up what she wrote. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we shot it black and white. We shot it in color. We used high contrast film. We used, you now paper back then was like grays, um, one through F5, the higher the number, the more contrast. Mm -hmm. So you try all these different ways and then you would give it to the examiner and that way they can see and whatever worked for them to go to trial, then that's what they use. But I had a supervisor where he was like, cause everything, most of, most of everything we did was eight by 10 film. Mm -hmm. uh, everything, we had a ruler. Uh, Sometimes when um, the field was sent or something, if they had an ink pen, if they photographed something and had an ink pen for measurement, they would send that ink pen in because all ink pens aren't the same. Mm -hmm. All rulers aren't the same. So you put everything one-to-one. -one. Uh, my, my supervisor, he was like, I want the negative straight. I don't want no crooked. Mm -hmm. I don't want no smudges. I don't want no lint. 
So when I presented to him, I knew all that. So that and the training, and then with the military, you know, back then the military, like, and that's 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 all I know. And I like that because mm-hmm. I take my time. I'm like, nah, that ain't right. I come back and do something like, I could have done better than that. I see it. And I know I could have done something better. So with the with having to use film, because you know nowadays we can take a million shots over and over and over <laughs> again. Um, and yeah. I remember when I was taking kid pictures of my kids back when I just had it. Well, it was the youngest one. No, it was the oldest one. It's my oldest boy. I had the film camera. Uh-huh. And one time I accidentally grabbed a black and white uh, ISO 400 film. Those were some okay. interesting pictures. But I'm just thinking, having to take those pictures, you have to be on point for the most part. I know you said you redeveloped it different ways. But if you didn't develop it with the right balances in camera, you lost your shot. Right. Like with the in the case you were just talking about where they sent you the hand before burial. Once it's buried, right, right. getting it back is like can right. you could probably get it back, but there's a lot of red tape and how much time in your case is lapsing while you're waiting to get it right. Exactly. And when we used to go out and do um uh crime scenes maybe crime scenes, or we go out and do um, a major case like uh, Oklahoma City. I went out to Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. You know, once you left that crime scene, you could not go back. Mm. Once they said this crime scene is closed, it was closed. So when you're shooting film, mm-hmm. you had to have, like, we shot Mamiya, so we had an option of Mamiya or Hasselblad or whatever, because that was the fun thing about it, because we had Buku money, <laughs> and we had toys. You just close your eyes and like, oh, Man, what I want today, you know. But um, you go in, you know, you have your batteries, you have the bricks of film, you know, the 120 film just had bricks. And then what we would do, even though we had a unit that had a machine to process mm-hmm. film, we hand process it. Because if that machine had a bad day and the gear broke, mm-hmm. you can't go back. Right, that's so, it. So, you know, you're, you cannot go back. So you hand process the color film or the black and white and everything, you got it all done. You got back, and this week you're like, "Whew!" Everything came out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you started with the house of bad. I f- Later on, weren't you using a Nikon towards the end? Or yeah, okay. We, we um we were Nikon. So, but back at the beginning, like I said, in studio we shot eight by ten mostly, mm-hmm. maybe some four by five, and then uh, when we go out, we had a um, choice of. Uh, at the time, it was a Mamiya or the Hasselblad. And then when digital started stepping up, mm-hmm. got a little bit better, a little bit better, we kind of start, and we were Nikon, so we started getting the Nikon gear and everything too, so. Okay. So now you're retired, and yeah. you are the reason I have a Sony. <laughs> and I don't have buyer's oh, remorse. God. The only remorse I have is that I got spoiled on those Nikon batteries being able to last me days without a charge, and this Sony battery yeah. is like, give it up, Two hours, that's it. You have switched to mirrorless. Tell me about your new kit and why you went that route. Well, when I knew I was ready to retire, I said, okay, I need to get something smaller because mm-hmm. I was a Canon shooter. Mm-hmm. I was a, at work, I was Nikon. At home, I was Canon. And I'm like, I didn't shoot that much because I don't know because it was heavy and I had too many lenses. I didn't know what I want to do. And maybe because I was still working. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was working every day doing photography in the studio on a weekend. Very seldom I want to go out and shoot mm-hmm. unless my nephew was playing baseball. Mm-hmm. He playing baseball or something, I'd be out there with a the camera and everything because it was training. Mm-hmm. So I was able to shoot and process it at work and make yeah. the big pictures and everything. Because there's no such thing as small when you got big paper and everything. Um, so I found this guy called Bill. His name was Bill Fortney, mm-hmm. older Caucasian gentleman. Mm-hmm. And he, his thing is Americana, going around, photographing the old stuff and everything. And uh, I said, man, I want a mirrorless. But Canon and Nikon was slow. Mm-hmm. So I was watching one of his tutorials, and he had the big hands. And I'm looking, I'm like, if he can hold that, I can hold that camera. <laughs> so I'm looking at everything. I said, man, that looks pretty good. So I'm like, I'm like, let me get one. So I bought one before I retired. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to go out and shoot, shoot raw. I said, okay. I had an Epson printer at work, 20 by 30s. I'm like, let's see what it can do. Mm-hmm. So I made some 20 by 30s. I'm like, oh, 
okay, no, it's not a full frame. I never owned a full frame. And I'm like, wow, this is nice. And the lenses were like nothing, you know, you just walk around and just. So wait, this is for the this is for the Canon or the Fuji film? Fuji. Okay. The Fuji. I bought the the first was the XT one. Okay. And I said, okay, I loved it. I said, okay, I like it, but it's not the one I really want. Mm -hmm. I wanted the X Pro two because that that old range finder look and all that. I said, when I retire, that's my retirement gift. Mm. So I got the I got the X Pro two, and um, it's just. I just like it, man. It's just like you said, you can see everything going on, but you got to remember it's a small computer. Yeah. Because everything's going on. You want to keep on looking at the back. You want to do this and do that and do this. And the, and the batteries are draining the drain. But little by little, the batteries are getting better. But you got to remember what you're asking this camera to do. And there's so much that it does. And then the lenses, you've got a lot of movement too. You know, I, I, um, download the firmware for the lenses and the camera. Mm-hmm. You know that's how much they are, and I'm quite sure Sony does the same thing. Yeah, they do. But uh, I I love them. I I shoot almost all the time now because it's just so nice and light, and the lenses are fast, mm-hmm. reasonable. Um, I bought some used because I don't, I had no you know no qualms of getting anything used, and I just fell in love with Fuji because Canon and Nikon was too slow. There's that. That's why I went to Fuji. They're also so bloody expensive. Yeah, they came out. I'm like, oh. Uh. Right. Like, I mean, I, it's taken me, <laughs> I got the Sony in December, and I've been learning it, and I'm getting better with it. I'm feeling more comfortable with it. That said, I do miss what I know about Nikon. <laughs> So I was yeah, like, so I yeah. started looking again, like mm, maybe I should get Nikon as a backup. Maybe I can get a mirrorless. And I was like, cause I switched for the same reason you mentioned. I wasn't shooting as much cause I was noticing mm-hmm. when I was going to conventions, the older I get, when I was covering awesome con and stuff like that, I would come home and my shoulder, I would just be in pain and stiff and hurting for a few days from carrying my camera around. Even with smaller yes. lenses, it's, it's just a heavier camera. So I'm learning it and I'm getting used to it. But yeah, I yeah, I yeah. started with Nikon and so I'm kind of married to it. So yeah, I looked, but I mean, you're right. It is so bloody expensive. They're like $3,000. Like, I know, it's just for the body. I'm just like, y'all came out kind of hard. I'm like, it don't even include geez. a lens. I'm like, what the no. heck? No. I might as well go ahead and get a Leica. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pay the like it to take three more years to get a lens because the lens is just as much as a but yeah, they just came out. Both them and Canon just came out too expensive. So mm-hmm. and that's too bad. Nice. But I, I'm you know, and I'm using more prom because mm-hmm. now I got time. Yeah. And you know, that first year I had to tell myself, slow down. Slow <laughs> down, take the time. You're not on a clock, you know, you don't have to expedite this. It's not a special. Take your time. And I was, I'd be out there walking. Take your time. Mm-hmm. Slow down. Yeah. You don't have to finish <laughs> this today. You got tomorrow. <laughs> you got the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, and, it, and every day I had to talk myself into it. And I'm laughing because now I got time. So yeah. now I'm kind of like getting out. But a friend told me, he said, I can see your, you know, your photography background in the guard, in the bureau, and mm-hmm. your, um, your, uh, how you can compose all of that yes. mixed in what you're doing. Yeah. I said, oh, okay, thank you. I said, thank you. Yes. But, you know, just taught to be thorough about it. Like, you know, you could do better. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I still, and, you know, it's just, I'm always reading something or watching a tutorial on anybody. And I'm just still learning and like, okay. You know, and so nice about the metadata that you get with your cameras. Like, mm-hmm. man, what I do wrong? Yeah. And then I got the kick of infrared because I love infrared. We used to use infrared uh, eight by ten all the time at work. So now I go out in the middle of the day. No photographers out there, but me. <laughs> and you know, the brighter the day, you know, infrared comes out much better and everything. And I'm just loving that. So, it, it, mirrorless is nice because you can see, like you said, you can see everything that's changing while you looking at it. Yes. You're like, man, and <laughs> that's nice. I did take care of, well, I, I, I bought a Godox flash, right? And oh. I sent it back. So <laughs> let me explain why. 
I bought the Godox flash okay. and I bought the trigger. I bought the wrong trigger, so that's why the trigger had to go back. But the flash I got, okay. I got so used to the SB700 where I could do a 360 turn. And uh-huh. the Godox, it wasn't a th- the one I, that I wound up with did not have a 360 turn on the head. It, it, okay. was, it was only okay. 90 degrees up and down. So I wound up sending it back. I wound up getting the newer. That okay. flash has got a 360 head and the trigger. And I was playing with it last week. So, so yeah. But you're the reason I'm mirrorless. Thank you very much. It was a good decision. <laughs> you I, re- I was here somebody. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and you recently kind of self-published your 365 project. Yes. That was my a photograph a day. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people, when they retire, they have nothing to do. Because mm-hmm. most of the time, most of the uh, friends are work friends, where mm-hmm. you don't see them no more. Yeah. And they have nothing to do. And lucky for me, <clears throat> I had photography. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I got to do something. Because people, first thing they say, well, you going to go back to work? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come that's this far why, to go back to work. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got here to... Do nothing, you know, mm-hmm. and people don't have nothing to do. So what I did, I took my camera, no matter where I went, and took a photograph every day. Mm-hmm. And I, and that was my um, my honeymoon. Uh-huh. Because you, I'm adjusting from 39 years of going somewhere to nothing now. And that is a big change in your life. What's wrong? No, go ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. I did something stupid, but go on. <laughs> Oh, we're good. We're good. I saw that look in your face. So I, I, I did that. I forgot and, to do something, uh, but it's okay. We're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I go there. But, uh, and it worked out. But I said, oh, every day. But I said, you know, it's something missing. Then I joined this photo challenge group on Facebook. And I really wasn't into it mm-hmm. because I already done it. Mm-hmm. And all my career, most of the time, we work by ourselves. You know, the photographer's in the studio, but you work by yourself. So I'm more like a loner photographer. Mm-hmm. I really don't need a group to put it up. And I'm like, I wasn't feeling it. And I'm like, I need to work on my book. Yeah. So lucky for me, I edit as I went along. Mm-hmm. And all thing I had to do was just put everything in there and... Uh, I thanked the group. I put it on the group. I said, you know, thank you for making me finish this chapter in my life. Mm-hmm. And that was the book. And once I said thank you and all that, I signed off the group because I'm like, <laughs> you know. yeah. And I think, and I think because I completed it, mm-hmm. it's no fun to go back and do it again. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was, yeah, it was good. <laughs> it, 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 it was a lot of work, <laughs> patience, and every day. Like one day I sat up there and had my little footies on, watching Murder, She Wrote. And I'm like, <laughs> my phone. I said, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so what do you have? Planned? Was, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you have no, any, do you have any no, big, do you have any projects planned for this year? No, you know, I do my little blog, which mm-hmm. is fun. Uh, I enjoy that. Um, it is surprising too. the past year. I really got into it big last year and I helped out a lot of people because I do a before and after Hmm. like uh, when I got into infrared I showed the before and after Mm -hmm. and one guy said oh I'm buying my filter now because he saw what he could and couldn't do Mm -hmm. or when I went out and did long exposure I went down to Virginia Beach Mm -hmm. and I showed the before and after and I was showing them you know how it looked like this and I said hey for mirrorless you can see everything you're doing Mm -hmm. auto exposure um, in the uh, uh, ND filter was just pure black and it mm-hmm. autofocus through that. I'm like, you don't need no workshop. You, could... <laughs> <laughs> you don't need nobody to... you don't need nobody to tell you what to do. If you got a mirror, you can see everything. Mm-hmm. So I enjoy that, but big project, it all depends on how I feel. Like the other day, I need to do a blog. Uh, I wanted to shoot and I didn't go, get to go to shoot. I said, you know what? I'm going to go in this backyard. Mm-hmm. I'm going to find 10, I'm going to find five things to shoot put my camera on the tripod and I put my macro lens, my 60 macro. Mm. And I went out that little backyard, ain't got backyard on like that. And I found five things to shoot you know, in the backyard. Okay. So it just makes you still be creative. I'm still thinking, still trying to figure things out, how I can do things better. And 
you know, my thing is whatever comes along, if I like it, I'll, I'll do it. No, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> So I do want to thank you so much for agreeing to sit down with me. <laughs> oh, I enjoy it. Yeah, no, I, you know, like I said, I love it up a little bit. Hmm? It's breaking up every now and then. Is it me or you? Uh, it might be on your end. You're coming through fine on my end. Okay. So, but it's okay. Um, no, I really, I know you said, why me? Like, if you could sit back, I hope you go back and listen to this and realize why I wanted you to be the first. <laughs> Because, <laughs> like you said, a lot like of people laugh all the time. <laughs> well, no, not even that. It's one of those things where, with a lot of photographers, you do hear, "Well, I used to play around with cameras as a kid," or, you know, things like that. So to have someone to come from the background that you came from and who came to photography the way you did, and like I said, I can see the pieces of how meticulous you had to be in your professional life, in your personal work, like your ability to find, it. like when we went, you and I have gone on photo walks together. And I've seen mm -hmm. some of the shots you've taken after you've taken them. I'm like, I never would have thought to shoot that from that angle, mm -hmm. that composition. And I feel like that is some residual from your ability and your need as a forensic right. photographer to have to be very detail oriented and look at it from different compositional angles. So, so thank right. you so much for being my inaugural episode. Uh, You're welcome. I, will... I meant to tell you too when I saw your uh, your little trailer. Oh, I wasn't. Try... Everybody kept saying, "Oh, look at your sexy buzz." I was not trying to be sexy. I was just trying to be very professional, informal with it, and everybody thought I was trying to be a phone sex so operator. Funny. I don't know why. <laughs> It was great. It was great. But how often are you going to do this? I think this is great. I think I'm going to try to release uh, three a month along with a personal video a month. But I've got about four interviews lined up so far for people cool. just finalizing things. That's the goal. I'm also going to be interviewing like some quilters and some embroiderers as well. So just all the crafts I'm interested in, I'm interested in talking oh, yeah. to these people, right? <laughs> and okay, I haven't... It'd be, it'd be good to be good to meet other photographers and yeah. you know see what people do and see what different things people do i mean like i said it's law enforcement for instance photography is it's it's, it's a it's a good thing mm -hmm. um and it's fun mm -hmm. it is fun and, and you appreciate what you do especially when you get something out of it Cause it's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of work. But I, I wouldn't have trade my career for nothing. And if I had, if I did go back to work, I'm like, if I can't do that, I'm not gonna last anyway. Mm. I, if, I, if I didn't have the toys that I had, you know, or just the way we went out and documented something versus maybe where another group is two different. Cause a lot of times when we go out, I do go out and do a crime scene. They, the law enforcement might not have a photographer. It's just one of the cops did the photography thing, mm -hmm. you know, so they're not going to be as thorough. It's just like, you know, our ages weren't as thorough as I was because they're ages. They got other things to do. We just, I used to just teach them how to don't touch this button. Don't touch this button. Touch this button. Something happened. Call me. Mm -hmm. So I had to read the manuals. I had to know the cameras up here. So if they call me at home and they saying this and this and this now in the surveillance van, I, my mind would be like, uh, you know, you got to think quick mm -hmm. because their time is like, you know, so you made it everything simple for them so they can do what they, you know, wanted to do. But shooting film was fun. Mm -hmm. And I, I bought a couple of rolls of film and I put in a camera because I got a couple of black, I mean, um, film cameras, but I shot it. I hadn't sent it off yet because I got to let somebody else process my film mm. and I'm used to process my own film you have you know? ever thought about I setting up your... it a certain way yeah have I you ever shoot it, push it pull it or push it anything like that but have you ever you thought say? about setting up your own uh light room oh no or dark room is too much work, work. <laughs> chemicals yeah that's true chemicals, that's a good point yeah the equipment ventilation mm. All that, and I'm probably when the day I die, when they open me up, developer fix oh, stabilize. No. So... You think so? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I mean, I probably um, 
probably the first good these 20 years doing photography was film mm. i mean i mix chemicals mm -hmm. we clean machines we process our own film we uh still you know we had machines to uh print but mm -hmm. we also had trade process still mm -hmm. you know so we still had that and everything so yeah, we got a lot of stuff up in there. Yeah. But it was fun. But I can't, I, so, you know, I've been sitting on this film over a year. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I gotta sit it out. It probably looked like crap. Not if you kept it in the refrigerator. That's what we were always told. Keep it in the refrigerator. Keep it. Uh, <laughs> no, not in the refrigerator. And I know better. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing I got in the refrigerator is my batteries. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't even put it in the refrigerator right up there. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Don. I know. I know. Don, thank but you. But this is fun. Thank you. Thank you. Don't hang up. And we, <laughs> we got to get out and shoot, too. Yes, we do. We will. We will. <laughs>